Hey everyone, it's Kairos. Today, I'm going to be addressing the super common question, when should I stop ganking a lane? Is there ever time to gank a losing lane? Should you ever leave your snowballing lane alone? I'm going to share with you one simple rule to help you make better decisions about how to spend your time and resources across the map. If you enjoy this video and want to see more like it, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. When you're in the middle of the game trying to decide which lanes to play around, the first step is to categorize each lane as either losing, even, or winning. You determine the category based on your laner's kills and their CS compared to their lane opponents. Keep in mind that the gold value of 15 CS is about the gold value of one kill. So if your laner is down a kill, but they actually have 15 CS lead, then we'll just call that about even. Now here's a simple rule. You should only visit a lane if in that immediate play, you can either move them up to a better category or prevent them from moving down to a worse category. This means you'll only play around a winning lane if it's going to prevent them from losing their lead and going down to even, and you'll only visit a losing lane if there's a chance that play results in them becoming even. Now this one may seem obvious, but let's look at a scenario that demonstrates why you should never gank lanes that are beyond saving. This scenario should be pretty easy to imagine. Your Yasuo is losing lane really hard, but is spam pinging you for help. His lane's beyond saving at this point, because you won't be able to even out his lane with any single play. If you decide to gank this lane, there are three potential outcomes. You could kill the Fiora, and even if Yasuo gets the kill, he's still down at least two kills, and if he crashes the wave, he's still down 15 CS, most likely. Second, Fiora could just get away, and you've wasted time in the top lane, and allowed the enemy jungler to make plays on the rest of the map. Or third, she could just double kill you, or the enemy jungler shows up on counter ganks, and you lose that 2v2. So even in the best case scenario, you won't really be able to save this lane, and you're giving the enemy jungler a green light on the rest of the map. Now let's look at another scenario where your laner is actually the one who's ahead. Even if the Rise dies here once or twice, he'll still be in the winning category. This is a lane that doesn't really need your attention as much as others. Rise is able to absorb pressure if the enemy jungler ganks, he's likely going to 2v1 or maybe trade kills, so ideally you use the pressure that he has to focus on getting your even lanes ahead or bringing your losing lanes to a point where they're even. If you're focusing too hard on a lane that's already won, that just gives the opportunity for the enemy jungler to go and impact the other areas of the map, and you might potentially have two losing lanes for the one lane that you've snowballed, and you end up losing the game because of it. So we've looked at lanes that are beyond saving, and then also lanes that are already snowballed. So that leaves the obvious third option of lanes that are currently even. You should spend the majority of your time influencing these lanes, rather than lanes that are more or less already decided. By getting an even lane ahead, you put them in a position to carry on their own, or if you prevent them from dying to a gank or to an enemy engage, you're able to keep them relevant and prevent them from falling too far behind in the game where they can't impact the map at all. As a disclaimer, this is really meant to be a general guide more than steadfast rules. We haven't taken into account important factors like scaling, champion matchups, power spikes, or cooldowns. So use these concepts to help make better decisions about where you should be spending time on the map, but remember that there are always situational exceptions. To sum it all up, you should look at each of your lanes and categorize them as behind, even, or ahead based on their CS and kill advantages. Then you should only visit lanes if you can immediately move them into a better category or prevent them from falling into a worse one. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Leave a like or subscribe if this video is helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.